carbon hydrogen combustion analyzer calculations. Okay, so let's look at what a carbon hydrogen combustion analyzer is. It's an instrument used for analyzing these type of chemicals, carbons and hydrogens, right? Hydrocarbons. Um, it allows forensic scientists, food chemists, pharmaceuticals, and other chemists to determine the percentage composition of compounds that are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay, so let's look at pretty much just a schematic diagram of one of these analyzers is. So we have oxygen coming in. In a furnace here, what we're going to have is we're going to input our sample. Okay, then we're going to have something that is um, a water absorber, okay, such as uh, magnesium uh, percarbonate. Okay, and so we'll be able to collect uh, water in here. We'll be able to collect carbon dioxide here in a common um, CO2 absorber is sodium hydroxide, okay? And then we have an output of oxygen and some of the other gases. So we'll use it, um, you know, so, such an instrument to be able to make calculations of what is a specific compound. So you have a compound and you know that it's some kind of a hydrocarbon. So you'll use a device like this to be able to figure out what percent composition of each one it is to be able to help you figure out what the empirical formula and ultimately what the molecular uh, formula is of the compound. So let's look at actual sample problems. So a 1.000 gram sample of pure compound containing only carbon and hydrogen was combusted in a carbon hydrogen combustion analyzer. The combustion produced 0 0.6919 grams of water and 3.38 grams of carbon dioxide. Calculate the masses of carbon and hydrogen sample. Now, what do we do? Well, we need to find the mass of carbon and hydrogen in the sample. And how do you do that? Well, you have the following formula. The mass of the water collected times the mass of hydrogen in H2O. Okay. And we have the divided by the molar mass of water. So let's look at this calculation. So what is the mass collected of water? Well, here it is, 0 0.6919 grams. And we're multiplying it by the mass of hydrogen in H2O. So we have just the mass of the hydrogen in H2O. So we're only looking for hydrogen. Okay, so how many H's are there? Well, there's two H's. So we take the molar mass, okay, we multiply it by two. Or we take the, the atomic mass of, uh, of hydrogen and we multiply it by two. And we're going to divide this by the molar mass of water. And the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams. When we do this calculation, what do we get? We get 0.0. .0 seven seven five six grams okay of our hydrogen sample okay. so now to do we're going to do the same for carbon so we're going to take the mass of the carbon dioxide collected which is three point three three eight grams we're going to multiply it by the mass of carbon in co2 so what is the mass of carbon? Well, their mass of carbon is 12.01 grams. So there's one carbon, okay, one carbon in CO2. And we're going to divide it by the molar mass of carbon dioxide, which is 44.01 grams. And when we do the calculation, we get a mass of 0 0.9109 grams of carbon in this sample. So here we have the same sample problem. The only difference is now we're going to be asked to find the empirical formula of this compound. So to do that, we need to have the information that we found in the first part of the, the, the equation. So 
we knew that the, uh, the mass of hydrogen, okay, um, the mass of hydrogen was 0 0.07756 grams, and the mass of carbon was equal to 0 0.9109. Grams. So, what we have to do in order to find the actual empirical formula is we need to take the mass okay, and I, or of each one of these and actually try to find the number of moles of hydrogen and the number of moles, okay, number of moles of carbon. So, how do we do that? Well, let's take hydrogen. And we're going to, we have a sample of 0 0.07756 grams. And we're going to divide it by the molar mass of hydrogen. And the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.008 grams per mole. So grams are going to cancel out and our answer is going to give us the number of moles of um, of hydrogen. And the number of moles of hydrogen is 0 0.07694 moles. So let's try to find the number of moles of carbon. We're going to do the same thing. And we're going to take the mass, 0 0.9109 grams. We're going to divide it by the, uh, the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.01 grams per mole. And we get 0 0.07584 moles of carbon. So now, what do we do with this? Well, we take this formula, okay, and we have carbon 0 0.07584 moles of it. We have hydrogen and 0 0.07694 moles of that. And we're going to divide this by the lowest mole that we have for carbon or hydrogen. The lowest one is the one we have for carbon. So we're going to divide each one by that. And we're doing the same thing that we've done before okay, when we're trying to find empirical formula. Right? So you take your mass, you, you take your molar mass, uh, and then you find the number of moles. And then you take those number of moles and you divide it by the lowest of all the mole ratios between each one of your atoms that you're looking at to find your empirical formula. And if you look at the numbers, it's very negligible. Okay, Very small difference between the two. So in the end, when we divide them, we're going to have one to one, which gives us an empirical formula of CH. Thank you.